Hello again, my name's John. I'm a retired cook from the northeast of England in the UK and welcome to my latest video recipe. And in this one, I'll be making another one of our customers' favourites. It's very easy to do and it's this delicious minced or ground beef and onion pie. You can view the ingredients list and full written method for this recipe on the recipe page on the channel's website. I'll leave a link in the description under the video or you can click on the eye icon top right of the screen to take you directly to the recipe page. And I'll be doing the Patreon and PayPal shout out a little later in the video. And with that out of the way, let's get on with today's recipe. Right, I'll start the recipe by making the pastry. Now I'll be using my food processor to make my pastry. It's much better and quicker this way. But you can make it by hand if you wish. I go into a lot more detail in my chicken and mushroom pie video. There'll be a link to that recipe in the description box under the video or just click on the eye icon top right of your screen. Okay, that's the 340 grams or 12 ounces of plain or all-purpose flour plus the salt in the machine. Next to go in is the 85 grams, that's 3 ounces of butter and the same amount of lard or shortening. And make sure everything is cold when you're making pastry. Now I'll pulse the machine for a few seconds until it resembles fine breadcrumbs. Right, because I've had a few comments about some people experiencing cracking in the pastry and replacing some of the water with one large well-beaten egg. That should solve that problem. OK, set your machine away and slowly add the 60 mils of water. Once the pastry starts riding around the machine, it's done. And I'm showing this in real time, so you can see it doesn't take that long at all. About 15 seconds. And there it goes. And that's it. The pastry's made. And if your measurements were correct at the beginning, you should have around 620 grams or 22 ounces. So I'll divide it into two, one at 320 grams for the base of the pie and the other at 300 grams for the top. OK, I'll get that wrapped in cling film or you can use plastic food bags and get it into the fridge for at least 30 minutes before using it. You can make this well in advance though. And this is the pie tin I'll be using. And as you can see, it's 23 centimetres, that's 9 inches by 2.5 centimetres or 1 inch deep. Now it needs to be greased. I'm using a little lard to do mine, but you can use butter or shortening. Once it's done, I like to keep mine in the fridge until it's needed. Right, time to start making the filling. In a large pan on a medium heat, add a couple of tablespoons of oil. I'm using vegetable oil to do mine, but you can use any oil you like. First job is to gently fry off the onions to the point where they are soft and transparent and just starting to colour. This should take around four to five minutes. Next, add the ground or minced beef to the pot. When you buy your ground or minced beef, make sure it has a 5% fat content because you don't want a lot of grease in this recipe. OK, start to break up the mince and the best tool to do this is a wooden spatula until it all separates as shown. If it starts to stick to the bottom of the pan, a bit like mine is, add a little of the water from the recipe. Now add a couple of beef stock cubes. I'm using OXO in the UK, but you can use the equivalent of those where you live and mix those in. Keep stirring with your spatula until all the red colour is gone. Now add the rest of the water from the recipe and bring that to a simmer. 
To thicken the filling, you can use a couple of methods. A teaspoon of corn flour mixed in a little cold water will do, or if you know how to make it, a little roux, using butter and plain flour. Or what I'm going to use is 30 grams, that's one ounce, or a couple of heaped teaspoons of these beef gravy granules. Not only will this thicken the pie filling, it'll also add a bit extra beefy flavour. Now season it to taste and that's the filling done. Now I'll let it cool off before making the pie. Time to start rolling the pastry. First thing to do is dust the bench and the pin with flour. If you're not familiar with rolling pastry, this is something you need to practice at to get a feel for it. The only thing I'll suggest is roll backwards and forwards in straight lines and turn the pastry 90 degrees. Once the pastry becomes too big to turn, then turn the pin 90 degrees. That should keep the pastry reasonably round. Make sure you tuck the pastry right down into the corners of the tin. A little tip here, for those with long fashionable nails, make yourself a little ball of pastry, dip it in flour and use that to push down into the corners. Right, I'll put that aside for a minute and quickly go through rolling out the top pastry for the pie. OK, that's the top ready to go. Time to make up the egg wash. For this recipe you only need a small egg and a dash of milk as shown and give that a good whisk. I've been asked many times if I'm going to get these little mini egg stroke coffee whisks in the website shop. I have been able to get hold of some so if you want one grab one quick while they're there. But they do come in handy for many applications around the kitchen. Right, I'll set that aside until I need it. Before going any further, preheat your oven to 170 Celsius, that's 340 Fahrenheit, or gas mark 3. Right, it's time to put this pie together. Start by adding the filling to the base of the pie and spread it out evenly. The filling's still on the warm side, but it should be okay. Next, brush the egg wash all around the edge of the pie. In our work kitchens, we'd normally just use water for this job, but I'm only making one pie and I have plenty of egg wash, so I'll just use that. Unroll the top pastry over the base and gently press down the edges with the palms of your hands. Time to crimp all around the edge of the pie using your four fingers and thumbs as shown. This just takes a little practice to do but you soon get used to it. And now trim off the excess pastry. You can reuse this pastry by the way and the cling film from earlier. Just roll it into a ball and you can keep that in the fridge or the freezer. Time to brush the egg wash all over the surface of the pie. Can you see that little blister forming? 
That's because the filling was still a bit warm, but it will go down once I put the ventilation holes in it. Right using a fork I'll prick a few holes here and there all over the surface of the pie and if you look closely you'll see that little heat bulge go down. Right, time to get it into the preheated oven. Now I'm using the bottom element on my oven. That way the underside of the pastry will bake much better. And now I'll set the timer for 35 minutes. And while that's baking I hope you don't mind if I give my very first recipe book a bit of a plug. The book has lots of our favourite recipes from our work kitchens in it and is available in the channel's website shop along with loads of other equipment I use in the videos. It's just another way you can support the channel. I'll leave a link in the description box below the video or just click on the eye icon top right of your screen if you want to order a copy today. Right, time's up and the pie is done. So I'll get it out and onto a wire rack and let it cool for 10 minutes before removing it from the tin. If you don't think yours is quite done yet, just give it an extra 5 minutes. And remember, no oven runs at exactly the same temperatures. But as you can see, mine is a lovely golden brown and looking great. Okay, it's been 10 minutes since it came out the oven and I've removed the outer ring of the tin and I'll serve it from the base of the tin, so I'll leave that on. Right, it's cool enough to cut a slice off and give it a try. I can't turn it over to let you see the underside as it'll fall apart, but take my word for it, the base of this is perfectly baked. Now the filling for this pie is very basic, but you can experiment by using different herbs, but use them sparingly. A touch of dried thyme should be pretty good with this recipe. Ok, time for a taste. And as I knew, it is absolutely delicious. We used to serve this pie with mashed potatoes, peas and a nice rich beef gravy. Wonderful heartwarming comfort food. And I really hope you give this very simple recipe a try and I'm sure you'll give it a thumbs up too. And as promised at the beginning, here is the latest list of my Patreon and PayPal donators. And they are Peter Armand, Stepping Frog, Michael Bukhari, Morton Larsden, Charles Davis, Treasure Island Baking by T. Van Deest, Aura Collins, Paul Wallace, Magdalene Thomas, Stephanie Liptoit, Mary Jo Carter and Gabrielle Armstrong. And thanks again guys, I really do appreciate all your support. Well thank you again for watching, please like, share, comment and subscribe by hitting the circle above. If you do subscribe, activate the bell icon next to the subscribe button on my channel page. And by doing that you'll be automatically notified every time I upload a new video. And in the meantime, here's a few of my other videos and playlists that you may want to watch. So, until the next time, be safe in the kitchen and bye for now.